A wise man once said that code should be like well-written prose. It should be simple, it should be straightforward, it should be concise and it should convey intent. In other words, the code should tell a story. A story that was written by the developer who wrote the code but a story that can be understood by anybody who might take a look at that code at a later point. But what does this mean for us as a software developers? How do we write code that is like well-written prose? Well, stay with me and we'll go through this. Hey there and welcome back to the Code Wrinkles channel. You heard right, code and prose, they might actually go together and you would ask why, how comes, how is it even possible? And I want to go with you through an example of code that we will refactor step by step and throughout those steps we'll outline actually what are the things that we can do, some practices, some principles that we can apply so that we can transform our code from bad code in well-written code that reads like well-written prose. It might not come to a surprise that the very first thing that we have to be careful about when it comes to well-written code is naming. How do we name our variables, our methods, our classes, our properties? Naming actually matters because of course naming should convey an intent. It should express the intention of the original author what exactly that specific part of the code is supposed to represent, what exactly the part of that code is supposed to implement as a behavior, and so that anybody could understand that. And unfortunately, we see in a lot of code bases, and we often are tempted to use abbreviations, for instances, or acronyms, but the big problem with this approach is that whenever somebody new comes to the team and it takes a look for the first time at that specific code, it doesn't really understand much because it lacks context. So naming is important because it should make the intent of the code available also for people that don't really have a context in which that code was specifically written. So let's go over to the code and see how this would look like and how we can refactor that. Let's take this method as an example. We see that it returns a double, that's cool. It has this very strange title, which is rel scr, so we don't know exactly what it means, but we see that it has two incoming parameters, which are of type book, and I would assume that this application has something to do with books. But if we look in the method, we see that, okay, the code is simple here and very easy to understand. Like we have here a double that is initially set to zero, then we, have a bunch of if statements and if certain conditions are true then we add some values to that original sum that we have declared. But what story does this method tell? What story about the functionality does this method tell? We don't know exactly. If we look for, for the very first time at this method we don't understand what this method is supposed to do as a functionality. So it doesn't tell a story. It is not like well written prose. What about now? Does the method look better? I would suggest that yes, and there are quite a few changes that we have done here. Let's imagine for a second that it is for the very first time that we take a look into this code base, into this application. We don't know anything else about the application except what we see right in front of our eyes. So what we see here is that, okay, we have a method which expresses some behavior, some functionality. It returns a double, cool, that's good to know. But then it has this name, calculate book similarity score. And even if I don't know anything about the application, the naming of the method makes the intent very clear. And it tells me the story of this method that it should calculate the similarity between two books and the output will be a certain score. So I can already imagine, once again, without even knowing anything about the application, that this method would probably be used to make book suggestion to users based on similarities. So that already tells me a lot about what we have achieved so far. To do this, we have done quite a few changes. First of all, we have named the property names of this book class to genre, then year, then author, and then publisher. Previously, they were kind of like an acronyms or, well, abbreviated names. Then we have, of course, changed the name of the method itself, calculate book similarity score so that it is expresses intent and we have changed the variable, the variable name here to score so that it once again it is very clear what this variable stands for then we have refactored a little bit also the if statements and we have got rid about the curly braces because we didn't really need them as everything we do is just add something to that specific score and the method already reads way better and expresses intent, so it's really easier to understand and easier to follow. However, is this code well-written prose right now? I would suggest that no, we still have some few issues here. 
The next thing that bothers me a lot at the code sample that we have right now is that we use those magic numbers like 0 0.4, 0 0.1, 0 0.2. But what does or what do those numbers actually mean? It's not clear at all. They are just numbers. And we are tempted as developers a lot of times to use such magic numbers or magic strings that we simply hard code in our functions, in our method, but that don't really convey an exact intent of what we want to do now. Because even in this code that we have looked at, the developer that did write the code, I assume that in six months or even one year, if he comes back and takes a look at the code, probably wouldn't re remember exactly what did he mean by those specific numbers. So let's go back to the code and see how we can fix this problem by simply extracting some magic numbers or magic strings into constants that have a meaningful name. And the next challenge that I see with our code right now is these magical numbers. Like we have 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and we don't have any clue what those numbers are supposed to mean. And this needs to be solved. Let's introduce for that, for instance, this set of constants. So we have a genre weight, we have a publisher weight, we have a year weight, and we have an author weight. And of course, following the principles that we have discussed earlier, we have very meaningful and specific names for our constants that already express some intent and tell a certain story. And if we look at this, we have this genre weight. Probably it means that books that belong to the same genre should have a similar weight when compared. But for instance, if we have this publisher's weight, well, this value here is less than the genre weight. And probably that would have something to do with the fact that if user reads a certain book from a certain publisher, it doesn't really mean that it would find another book from the same publisher similar to the first book. Because it might be a totally different book, a totally different genre, and it might not be appealing at all. And it's only logical in this case that the, pub that the publisher weight should be less than the genre weight when we calculate the similarity score for a book. And this already tells us a lot about the logic and the intent and the story about the functionality that we try to express and design. Of course, the only thing that we still need to do is come back here and for instance replace this with genre weight this should be then of course replaced with the publisher weight this the next one should be replaced with the year weight and last but not least of course we need to do this change and replace this author weight and now the code once again reads much easier it's easier to understand and we understand already Kind of like the full story of what we want to do here. And once again, the question, is this code right now well-written prose? Well, in my opinion, it is still not. Clearly, our code looks much better right now, but there is one thing that I still want to fix. And we have these execution branches in our code like this, if statements. These are actually, well, easy to read. I don't say that it's complicated, but if we take a more careful look at them, they don't really convey an intention. They don't really say exactly what is the intention of this specific branching. And even if this seems to adhere to all the solid principles and best practices, I think that we can go a notch further and make our code really read like well-written prose. So let's see how we can do that. Coming back to our code, we see that we have this exact same problem because in this very simple algorithm, we have different execution branches that we see in these different if statements. So we have if first book dot runner equals second book dot runner, if first book dot publisher equals second book dot publisher, and so on and so forth. And by the way, I have also changed the name of the book parameters to first book and second book to be, well, in accordance to what we have already said when we discussed naming of variables, functions, and classes, and properties, and so on and so forth. Now, coming back to our idea of of execution branches. This is, well, still not well-written prose. It's a little bit lacky if we think about it, about it in terms of prose. So what if instead we would extract this type of functionality in different private methods? Like for instance, add genre weight. Here we wouldn't need the constant anymore because the, const, the, the concept of the constant is in the method name, like add genre weight. The same goes for add publisher weight, add your weight and add author weight. So it's already there. And this means that in turn, we can come back to our main method and we can do some changes here. So how does it look now? 
In my opinion, this method or this code right now reads like well-written prose. Because first off, we have all the context and all the meaning and the intent already in the namings that we have. We have this calculate book similarity score. So we know exactly what this method is supposed to do. And then we have this score. We have the score that we set initially to zero. And then it's a very simple add genre weight, add publisher weight, add year weight and add author weight. If you compare to what we had initially, this code is much cleaner, it's, it's way easier to understand, it's easier to follow, and it really tells a story. It tells the story of the functionality of our application. There are some clear advantages if we write code that reads like well-written prose. And the first such advantage is that whenever a new developer comes to the team, or maybe OQA, whoever, but whoever comes new to the team, the ramp up time is way faster than without a well-written code. And that's really important because people can get to work way faster and can deliver way faster. The second very important advantage is that it's also easier to understand where bugs might be. Because when we get a bug report, for instance, we probably are referred to a certain functionality. Now, if our code naming kind of like conveys the functionality, then it's easier for us to find exactly where the problem might be so we can fix the problem much faster. And last but not least, of course, all these things together will make our code quality drastically improve, which for sure will be something very important for all the stakeholders in the projects that we are currently working on. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video. And through this, you make sure that other people might discover this video easier. Also, if you didn't subscribe to this channel, make sure that you subscribe and also hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever we have some new content on the channel. And I would also recommend you to don't be shy and head over to the comment section right now and just let me know if you agree with these principles that would lead us to have code that reads like well-written prose. Let me know if you have other principles that you might think are important in this specific scenario, and I would be more than happy to get the discussion started. This being said, once again, thank you very much for watching, and until the next time, I wish you the very best.